All right, welcome everyone to the very last segment of the higher order differential equations topic that we've been exploring for quite some time now. Okay, and this uh, one actually I will uh, venture away a little bit from the typical mechanical engineering application and focus on a doubly kind of uh, application. Okay, but we are familiar with it, we have been taught this in the mechanical engineering undergraduate as well, and we need to know these things. So, this is the inductor. This is the resistor, this is the capacitor, and there's some voltages being applied to the circuit. And if you remember from your courses, there's something called the Kirchhoff's uh, second law. Second law. And basically what uh, he said was, uh, you know, when I look at the voltage in here, that will be equal to across here, okay? Or any other uh, two points. So let's say that I pick here. And go all the way to here that voltage change will be equal to if I go over here as well the summation of the voltage or E in this particular case will be equal to VL plus VR plus VC right so L is the inductor so if I look at the definition of this VL I will find out that that's gonna be L which is DI DT right so that is this part how about this part the resistor, we know this, voltage is equal to resistor times the current, right? So R, I, as you has to use the same hat, so just indicate they are the same. And VC, the capacitor, is going to be 1 over C times the charge, Q, not, not 9, okay? Will be equal to, if I go from the other branch, I'll get myself E as a function of time. Well, why don't I put a plus sign in between them, right? basically to make this a uh, nice uh, equation actually I'm not very happy about this I so let's make this nicer I there we go so okay I feel a little bit embarrassed in here um, I was doing this high order differential equation and all of a sudden I have a first order differential equation what's going on over here I have an I here I have an I here where is the second order hmm okay that was a theatrical play uh, no, no 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 you need to look at this guy this the current is defined by this dq dt okay so you can see that the rate of change of charge is equal to the current so now i have a relationship okay um, so basically what i will do now is i will write everything with respect to the charge not the current so what i will do is i will go out and uh, wherever i see i i will insert dq dt dq dt okay that's what i'm going to do let me uh, do exactly what i said so it will be l which is the inductor d square q dt square plus r dq dt plus 1 over c times the charge will be equal to e t so this is the equation that i was looking forward to myself okay so the current is does not exist anymore so what i will do is i will first find the charge and then I will plug into this equation as needed to find my current, right? If the charge is constant as a function of time, what will happen to the current? Yep, you got it, zero. Uh, the rest of it is actually just going and putting some L value, R value, you know, C value here, as well as some kind of a function on the right hand side and solving it. And we've been doing this for a while, so it shouldn't be too dense, okay? So why don't I apply this to a particular, uh, you know, uh, case? to see what happens. Let's say that I have an LC circuit, okay? Now this is not an LRC circuit, so basically R is equal to zero, LC circuit. Let's say that I'm giving you this L is equal to 0 0.1 H, H is hour. Okay, no, it is Henry, okay? That's the unit of inductor. C is equal to 0 0.1 F, F is farad, which is the unit of the capacitor, okay? And by the way, 0 0.1 farad is fairly large. And I am given myself that this, uh, you know, voltage is changing like this in my particular circuit that I have. Sine, some kind of a constant omega, T. And this will be, what will be the unit of this again, please? Volt, right? V, volt. Basically, you see what I did? I gave you this. I gave you this. Well, I told you it's zero. I gave you this and I gave you this, okay? Um, but remember at the beginning of uh, last segment, we said that this is initial valid problem So I need to give you some initial conditions. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that um, Let's say that 
at the initial state my um, q0 is equal to 0 c where c is the integration constant no it is not c is coulomb okay that's the unit of um, charge and you can also get it where did i write it right here um, you can see what is the unit of this 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 will be let's say amp you know this part right amp times time amp second right so that's called coulomb and also i will have myself um, a current at the t is equal to zero as let's say that i am starting with zero amps as my current okay so let me kind of go over one more time before i solve it um, and tell you what i'm interested in in this particular question i'm interested in charge okay find the charge on the capacitor and let's go ahead and find the current as well while we are there why not um, in an lc circuit i don't have r when l is equal to 0 0.1 henry capacitor is 0 0.1 farad et is 100 times sine gamma t volts the initial condition is given to me my charge at time zero is equal to zero coulomb and my current at zero is equal to zero amp go as i said let's go then right yeah so l is given to me so let me plug this in so it's going to be zero one let's start a new page 0 0.1 um d squared q dt squared plus r is zero dq dt plus q pi 0 0.1 that is the c right is equal to the right hand side is 100 sine gamma t okay so you can see over here what is going on all right so you may ask me why am i putting this uh, kind of weird thing at the bottom of this well let me tell you what happens if i don't okay this is 90 right 9 divided by 0 0.1 is 90 yep i seen this in the exams when i'm grading yep 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 do something i you don't have to have a tail like this you do something so this is not a nine okay q is uh, kind of looks like a nine so that's the reason why i put this um anyways let's go back so if i want to solve this what do i do typically i multiply everything by 10 or divide by 0 0.1 same thing right so that i will get myself this equation that i am interested in dt squared plus 100 right 1 over 0 0.1 is 10 10 times 10 is 100 Q will be equal to the right hand side is going to be multiplied by 10 so that becomes a thousand sine term okay so the approach that I'm going to take will be very similar to what I've been um, doing uh, before so basically this Q that I'm interested in will be QC plus QP can you remind me what C and P stands for C is the complementary solution P is the particular solution obviously I'm going to start with QC where I'm going to look at the equation as homogeneous. So we are going to have this plus 100 QC will be equal to 0. So if I go ahead and write the ancillary equation, I'm going to get m squared plus 100, not m, is equal to 0. If I had an m, that should be the Q dt, which I don't have. Okay. So from here, you're going to see that I'm, my m will be 0 plus minus 10i. So this will be my alpha, this might be my beta, okay? So if I go ahead and write my QC, you will see that it's going to be e to the power of 0, right? So that is 1, that's out. I'm going to have C1 sine 10t plus C2 cosine 10t. So that will be my complementary solution. So then let's look at the, uh, the right-hand side so I can go ahead and uh, proceed with finding this uh, QP particular solution you know I have reminded this I'm gonna again go ahead and use the undetermined coefficients uh, because this seems fairly simple sine and cosine when you take derivatives you usually get the other one maybe there's a minus in front of it if you're taking the derivative of cosine right so I will use undetermined coefficients that's easier to me okay but you can do other methods that we have covered as well that's up to you a sine gamma t plus b cosine gamma t so now the question that I have is, um, is there an overlap in here? Well, at the first instance, maybe there is, but this is 10, this is gamma. So no, there is no, I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, overlap between the QC and QP. So they are two separate. So as you know, from the process that we have established, I have to take the derivative of that is equal to A gamma cosine gamma T minus B gamma sine gamma T. 
And if I go one more step, because this is a second order differential equation, so I'm going to need it. So that's going to be minus a gamma square, right? Sine gamma t minus b gamma squared cosine gamma t, right? And then, okay, so I have uh, basically this and this. I don't have a prime over here. You can see in here, where is it here? Right here. So I'm looking at this equation and I'm going to insert this uh, double prime over here and itself over here and equate the thousand. So let's do exactly what I said. So it's going to be second order will be minus a gamma squared sine gamma t minus b gamma squared cosine gamma t. That's the second. Plus 100 times, right, the itself. So a sine gamma t plus b cosine gamma t will be equal to the right hand side which was 100 or 1000 right yeah 1000 sine gamma t okay before I forget um, I was gonna say I forget this you see even though the right hand side is only has a sign I have to put cosine 2 just want to highlight that if you just go ahead and write a sine gamma t it's not gonna work right maybe the mathematics will tell you that is the case but you, you can simply go ahead and assume this by just looking at it okay Obviously, you know what I'm going to do. I will look at the left hand side of the equation and get uh, like this. Plus cosine of gamma t times time something. And then I will go ahead and equate this to thousand. And I will go ahead and equate this to zero. Do you see where I'm coming from? The zero. Because I don't have a cosine on the right hand side, right? So now let's fill in the blanks. So this is going to be minus a gamma square I can see from here right the other term is basically 100 a right plus 100 a is what I see how about cosine I see a minus b gamma square this is gone and then I have a plus don't forget the 100 b well you see I, I kind of prepared us for this particular step so you can see from here that I will have a parenthesis let's take in a parenthesis 100 minus gamma square is equal to thousand it's not as nice as I wanted to me but it is what it is I get myself an a of thousand divided by hundred minus gamma square so the B times hundred minus gamma square will be equal to zero right so from here you will see that your B is equal to zero because your hundred uh, gamma is not ten I didn't give you that actually if this gamma is ten we have a problem because the complementary and particular solution has the same form right so you can see that the b is zero so okay i'm done with my qp so if i go back down over here my qp will be equal to i'm just writing a hundred or uh, rather thousand hundred minus gamma square times sine of gamma t so that became my qp and if i sum them up the complementary and the particular solution let's write it just for a good measure qp this will be c1 sine 10t plus c2 cosine 10t plus 1000 divided by 100 minus gamma square times sine gamma t so i simply sum them up let me ask you a question does this end the segment i'm done no 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 i am done to a level the charge is zero over here as you can see as well as the rate of change of uh, charge which is the current is zero as well so i have to take advantage of that to find my c1 and c2 because i still have two unknowns well why don't we start by the easy one the first this one is easy because i can directly just plug it in uh, q0 is equal to zero so if i look here um, you know so when i put t is equal to zero what is uh, sine zero so that's gone right how about this this is gone too so these two terms vanishes so i get myself zero is equal to c2 times well cosine of 0 is 1 so that's it so i get myself c2 is equal to 0 okay so see this term is gone too so now if i rewrite my uh, you know charge you're gonna have c1 sine 10 t plus 1000 divided by 100 minus gamma square sine gamma t okay so i only have one unknown now which is c1 let's find that in order to do that, I'll find my uh, initial condition 2, which says this, right? Um, 
but you do know that this uh, I need to get my i is equal to dq dt so I have to take the derivative of the equation that you see up there which is not a huge deal so let's write it q prime will be equal to 10 c1 cosine of uh, 10 t plus 1000 divided by 100 minus gamma square times gamma times cosine gamma t. Let me double check. Yeah, this looks good to me. Okay, then I will simply go ahead and put a zero over here. Q prime of zero will be equal to zero. So from here, um, I'm going to get 10 C1 times cosine of zero is one plus 1000 gamma divided by 100 minus gamma square times one, right? Cosine zero is equal to zero over here. So you can see over here, my C1 is gonna be, well, it's gonna be a minus sign for sure. A thousand divided by 10 is 100, gamma divided by 100 minus gamma square. Very neat, right? Nope, not really, but again, it is what it is. So when all said and done, I'll get my QT to be, so that's gonna be minus uh, this divided by 100 minus gamma square sine of 10T plus thousand, not hundred, divided by hundred minus gamma square of sine sine gamma t. Okay, so if I take the in parentheses of, uh, you can see that there are common terms, so I can have my Q2 to be this, hundred divided by, I get myself hundred minus gamma square times, okay now, let's write the second term because it's a positive term, 10, because, right, thousand, sine gamma t minus gamma sine 10 t. That'll be my charge as a function of time in my circuit that I have established, okay? But also, uh, just for a good measure, why don't we find the current as well um, as a function of time? Why don't we take the derivative of this uh, equation? So this is constant, so this will stay exactly where it's at, right? Um, and then this is going to be 10 gamma cosine gamma t minus 10 gamma cosine 10 t. So I get myself i t will be equal to, so you can see in here, uh, 10 is common, right? And this is common too in both terms. So I'm simply going to do this, 1000 gamma divided by 100 minus gamma square. Looks not nice, right? Cosine of gamma t minus cosine of 10t and now we can call this a day okay so this will be my answer for the current this will be my answer for the charge okay all right thank you for going through this journey with me with the higher order differential equations i'll be back with uh, Fourier series orthogonal functions storm louisville problem because i need these things to solve pdes i'll be back okay have a good day bye bye